Good, good morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to Patton Church. It's lovely to see you all. My name's Joel. And my name's Kath, and you are so welcome, whether you are here with us in the building this morning or whether you're joining us online. It is lovely to have you with us this morning. And um, so what's going to happen this morning, Kath? So this morning, we are going to meet with the Lord, yes, and hang out with each other. We are going to worship together. The children are going to go and have an awesome time in their groups, and the young people too. Uh, we're going to worship. We are going to hear from Tom. Um, we're going to pray together, and that's it. It's going to be good. So good. And our prayer, as always, is that every one of us, every one of us in the building, every one of us watching online this morning, hey, guys, that every one of us meets with God. That's our prayer. Can you pray for us? Lord, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you, Lord, um, that your mercy is on you um, again today. And thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you together. And I pray, Lord, that we would hear your heart for us today, Lord, that we would leave here encouraged and uplifted and challenged and ready to go and be your light in the world. Amen. Amen. So, Lizzie, it's time for family worship. Let's go for it. If you want to come be down here as a child or young person, um, so you can do even better dancing, come and join us. I can see the promised land Though there's pain within the plan there is victory in the end. Your love is a battle cry. When my fears, when my fears like Jericho, in the walls around my soul. When my heart is overthrown, your love is my battle cry.
the mountains we move every chain of the past broken into all the fear of the lies we sing in the truth
fall before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm again. Fall before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm again. Fall before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. One more time. Fall before us. You're Awesome. Brill, grab a seat for just a moment. Grab a seat for just a moment. And welcome if you joined us during the singing. And welcome to Hanny watching online. Anyone else watching at home? Great to have you with us. Lizzie, hello. hello. Can you tell us what's happening with Pat and, Chil Pat and Kids this morning? I'd love to. We are going to have so much fun this morning. I know we say this every week, but every week we have even more fun. Um, upstairs today, we have got fun, games, we've got food, we've got Jesus, we're going to dive into the Bible this morning and we're so excited. Um, if you are here for the first time or you haven't yet registered yet, do come and follow us in the blue t-shirts in a second. We'd love to say hello, we'd love to get you registered and show you where to go. Um, and that's, in, that's if you are ages 2 to 11, we've got provision upstairs. Um, if you are here um, and you're under 2 this morning, you're here with um, a child under 2, we've got the lovely Faye. Faye, can you give us a wave? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Um, Faye is um, out in our crash this morning. If you would like to use that space we've got sofas um we've got Faye in there i mean it's going to be so much fun and we've also got the service streamed through there as well so you don't miss out on a thing sounds amazing thanks lizzie M, hey, hey, can you talk to us about Pat and Youth this morning? Yeah, so if you're here this morning and you are in year 7 to 11, we would love you to come upstairs and join us for our youth session after the worship. So there'll be a lovely sign on the screen that will tell you when to head up to the floor above. And um, we have a really fun session today because we have another special guest, which is Joshua. Woohoo! Um, Josh is going to come and talk to us um, as part of our Serving Swindon series. And we're going to be um, chatting about hosting team. And it's going to be really fun and we would love you all to be there. And we also really love seeing new faces. So if you're here for the first time, come and say hello. So good. Thanks, Sam. So if you are new to Patton Church, uh, two things. If you'd like to find out a bit more about what's happening in the life of the church and you don't get our emails, do head online to pattonchurch.org forward slash connect with us and fill out a little connect card and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that's happening um, in the life of Patton Church. And also, if you have joined the church since the last Newcomers event, we have got a Newcomers event today, woohoo, um, straight after the service this morning, um, which Joel will be hosting and just telling you a bit more about Patton, how you can get involved, all the amazing stuff that's happening. So do stick around for that if you've not been to one before. Also, this evening, if you're not able to stick around um, after today, after this morning's service, there is one as well this evening. And um, if you can head on to the website you can sign up there and you'll get emailed a link to the zoom it's on zoom this evening at 7 30 i believe brill and one other thing just to let you guys know about um is that in the four weeks time yesterday on the 4th of march it's our hearing god conference yeah it is and it's going to be just an astonishing day like we love when we come together on these sundays but well, this is going to be a whole day together. In the morning, we've got Paul Langham from Christchurch Clifton coming to give us some Bible teaching about hearing from God. And then we've got seven or eight different practical sessions, um, think of things like prophetic creativity, prophetic parenting. We're talking about personalities and hearing from God. Loads of brilliant things that's going to help equip us to be people who hear from God. And in the evening, we're going to have a celebration together. It's going to be a really, really wonderful day. You know, lots of us in our lives, we... Um, we, without trying, we go about our lives as if God doesn't speak. We go about our lives getting on with our things, doing our jobs, the things that are in our lives. But God is speaking. And the question is, are we listening? And this day is going to equip us and help us to hear from God for our daily lives. So you can register at um, patternchurch.org forward slash conference. 
to book your free ticket. It's going to be such a great day together. You can come to part of it or all of it, but we'd love to have, have you there. And I promise it's going to equip you for your life and faith as a follower of Jesus today. So good. I'll be there. Will you be there, John? I'll be there. Great. Um, great. I think, is that time for the children? It's time or for would parents you like to, speak to about... head to take your children up to your groups. Should we pray and, um, for them as they go? You go for it. Lord, thank you for all these wonderful children. I pray, Father, that as they go to their group, that they would learn more about you and be more equipped to be um, people of faith in their schools. Amen. Amen. Um, in the meantime, take, um, take, take one minute to say to the person next to you, what are you most looking forward to in February? What are you most looking forward to in February? So we're going to um, we're going to continue in our worship together. Welcome also guys online. Welcome to Wendy and Esther and to um, Joe and Andrew. Off on your birthday weekend, really fun. And um, so why don't we stand together? During the second song, um, some red buckets will be passed around. Um, it's an opportunity to give to life and work of Patton. If you're a visitor, um, or if you give in other ways, please just let them pass you by. And if you wanted to know more about giving, patternchurch.org forward slash give, and then it will be on there. So God, um, we thank you that, that you're here with us, and we thank you that, that the break is never on your end. So this morning, we lift our eyes to you. We lift our eyes from the stuff, the joyful stuff and the difficult stuff. We lift our eyes to you, the God who's at the center of it all, unchanging. We worship you, God. Amen. Let's worship together. This amazing God that we have. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? The King of glory, the King of love, the King. Yes. Who shakes the world? Who shakes the whole world? We've only thunder and leaves us breathless. This amazing grace, this sees a failing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, that you would down your life, that you would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done. Order, who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the 
darkness and you fill me with your peace give her a mercy you my help in time Lord I can't help but sing sing faithful faithful you are faithful Says that yes and amen. Yeah. Oh, you promises are yes and amen.
Listen careful. Faithful you are. Yes, faithful. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All you promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen.
Jesus, fill me just as I am. Empty and it but alive in your hand. Singing majesty. Just continue where you are. Continue to speak out your words of thanks and praise and worship. Go for it. Speak them out. Sing them out. Your own words of thanks and praise and worship this morning. As we're worshipping this morning, I, I f was just reminded of a, a site I saw the other day when I was driving and um, coming down um, past hospital and got to sort of coat water. And that roundabout there is just full of daffodils that are in bloom already. And um, yeah, I was just really sort of amazed that they were there already. Um, and I was just reminded this morning that God brings seasons and he brings new life and where we think things are perhaps dormant or um, have died maybe or um, dreams or prayers that we're praying but that he is um, in the business of bringing of bringing new life and new seasons and so yeah just I just don't know if you want to if there's something in your life this morning that um, you could do with a breath of his life into uh, if you just want to maybe call that to mind and let's just spend a moment perhaps praying into those things or or asking God to show you maybe where you could where you could use some of his life um, flowing in your in yours. We pray for new life in Jesus' name, for new hope in Jesus' name, for breakthrough in Jesus' name, for a shift in the name of Jesus. We pray for you to move in power, God. We invite you. You're, our, you're the first place we go, not the last. And we pray you move in power. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for us personally. We pray for Swindon. We pray for your church. We pray for new life in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit.
Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Yeah, Lord, and I pray that you would raise our expectation levels, that we would seek what you are doing, and that we would seek to be part of that, Lord, that we wouldn't just go along in our day-to-day lives, um, just allowing things to happen and not looking for you in, in our day, Lord. Would you show yourselves to us in our day-to-day lives? Yeah, as our young people head out, God, we pray for them. We pray that, that they meet you. We pray, um, we pray that, they, that they see who you are and that they follow you with everything. We talk often about an army of young people and we pray for Em and the team as they, as they pour into these young people. We pray, God, that you raise up people of courage and faith and character and holiness and leadership, God. Would you bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man, we take a seat. Thanks so much, guys. Great job. And um, welcome. If you joined us online, um, it's great to have you with us. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to re- invite Tom to come, and, to come and share from the Bible. But before we do that, we have some, some sad family news. Uh, so Tracy, who, who um, many of you will know, she's been on the staff team for just under a year. She's been um, our operations manager, and she, um, she's been, been off, off work for these past five or six months. And then um, sadly, she died on Thursday evening. Um, just really just beautiful, faith-filled, um, joyful woman who, um, who lived life to the full in whatever place she was in, who we just love and, and admire. And so it's in Philippians 1, it writes, For me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. And so it's an awareness that actually, actually to die for us is, is a great thing. And, and we have this wonderful hope for, for eternity, this sure hope that we celebrate. But also, um, we're really going to miss her because she's wonderful. And Jordan and Ellie, part of our church family, we can, we'll hold them in our prayers today and in the coming weeks. So I'm going to pray. God, we thank you for the gift of Tracy to us. We thank you for the gift of life that we get every day. And, um, and we thank you for... For, for what she's done for us and um, all she's poured into this church family. And um, we pray today, particularly for Jordan and Ellie, as they, as they sit on the day three of, of loss and pain and grief, and for all of those of us around who, who know and love her. And your psalmist, the psalmist writes that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And so we pray that that too will be our story in the coming days and weeks. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, man. So um, I'm going to invite Tom to come and speak. Thanks, Joel. Even when Tracy was not well enough to be at work, one thing she did with great diligence was to send feedback on the quality of the live stream every week. (laughs) And I will really miss my phone not buzzing in my pocket telling me that I'm too loud or too quiet. There's this thing that you may have heard us say sometimes when we celebrate communion together. The person at the front says, the Lord is here. And everybody else says, his spirit is with us. Oh, well done, some of you know it. And um, I was just thinking that as we were worshipping today. You know, it's really true, both those things. The Lord is here and his spirit is with us. And sometimes we feel it, and sometimes we don't. But it's so true, he's with us. We're going to read a little excerpt today from Paul's letter to the church in Colos, which Paul was writing from jail. And he was in jail somewhere between the year 50 and 60 AD. So Jesus has ascended into heaven. Jesus has been gone for maybe 25, 35 years but the generation of people who knew Jesus, they're still around. Paul, who never met Jesus during his earthly ministry, although he did meet him in a powerful vision, Paul is doing his best to tell people about Jesus, but life is tough for him, and he's in jail, and he's suffering for following Jesus. You know, Christianity goes through phases where it's deeply unpopular. It is in many parts of the world today. 
But Paul is full of encouragement for the Colossians. He's just full of encouragement for the Colossians. And he doesn't jump over what a desperate and helpless state we're in without Jesus. So he's going to underline that. But then he tells us what we are with Jesus. So we're going to read together. Um, If you've got a Bible with you, it might be helpful to have it open. If you haven't, don't worry. The words are going to come up on the screen behind me. We're going to read from Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 6 to 15. And this is Paul writing from jail to the church in Colos, and he says this, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, some of you I've never met before, and some of you have had to endure my talks in the past, and you may have thought I depressed you then. (laughs) Well, that was nothing. (laughs) Paul doesn't pull any punches in what he says about the state we were in before we received Christ. It's actually pretty dismal. We read in verse 11 that our whole self was ruled by the flesh. Now, in this context, the flesh means our nature before we received the Holy Spirit. There was no part of us that was completely whole. Our broken, sinful nature governed us. In fact, Psalm 51 suggests that all humans are broken, that we're sinful, that we're faulty goods from the moment that we came into being. Now, we can find it quite offensive, the idea that somebody else tells us that we're deeply sinful. I don't know how the Colossians felt when they first read this letter. But do you know, I reckon for most of us, we sort of know that deep within us. We sort of know that there's something not quite as it should be. We sort of know that we make bad choices, that we sometimes act out of anger that our motives are often pretty complex. We don't like it pointing out, but we know that it's there. Verse 13 takes this further and says, the the situation was so serious, it's like we were dead in our sins. We've broken God's law so many times, and we're in so much debt to him, the result was completely overwhelming. I told you I was going to depress you. (laughs) It's not easy reading, and it's especially not easy reading when you haven't yet tasted the freedom that comes from receiving Jesus Christ. Now, a little side note. Have you ever noticed when people like me are doing talks 
that there's sometimes something in the middle of a passage that you think, oh my goodness, I've got so many questions about that. But the person speaking just scoots right over the top of it <laughs> and ignores the bit that you think, oh my goodness, what on earth was that about? They've obviously chosen not to speak about like the elephant in the room or the circumcision in the room. <laughs> there's a lot of circumcision talk in this. I used to belong to a church, a wonderful church. It was much more traditional in style to this. And I was often the youngest there by a very, very long way on a Sunday. And we had a wonderful pastor who loved preaching from Paul's letters. And Paul's letters, Paul was the guy that wrote a large chunk of the New Testament. There's a lot of circumcision talk in Paul's letters. And it was the sort of church where everybody had their own place on a Sunday. There was about 25 of us. Everybody knew who sat on what pew. I mean, it's not a great culture, but it was just like the way that we were. And I used to sit with a lady called Mrs. Wilcox next to me and a lady called Mrs. Palmer on the row in front. And I remember one Sunday when our pastor started preaching from Matthew's letters about circumcision again, then pulling faces, which I can't quite imitate, but it was something like this. <laughs> I'd like making faces looking down there, although of course they were women, so it didn't actually quite work. But there's a lot of circumcision talk in Paul's letters. <laughs> and this idea will come up again and again and again. And actually, it's not completely irrelevant. It made a whole lot more sense to the original audience as they read this, because actually thousands of years before Paul wrote this letter, before Jesus was born, before King David, before even Moses, when God called Abraham and marked out Abraham's family as belonging to him, they showed it, the men, by being circumcised. It was a mark of whether you were in or whether you were out. I mean, literally a mark of whether you were in or whether you were out. There's actually some incredible circumcision stories, if you want to read a bit more gory detail, in the Old Testament, where there's like people who want to join the Israelites, so they have to go through this thing of being circumcised, and then when they can't stand up because they're in too much pain, their, um, their enemies come and slaughter them. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about that today. We're getting slightly sidetracked. But it was literally a mark of whether you were in or whether you were out. And it continued in Abraham's family, because God commanded it, down the centuries, so that even Jesus, when he was eight days old, was taken to be circumcised, his mark that he belonged to God's people. And the Bible is telling us that this same sign, marking us out as being different, as being called out of the world, as being belonging to God, that that same thing happens to us men and women spiritually when we receive Jesus not physically, as many of you will be pleased to know, there was all that bad stuff that was separating us from God, all that sin and darkness that lurked within us and within all people, but God has marked us out. He's marked you out and he's marked I out as now belonging to him, as now part of his special holy chosen people. And you may think to yourself that you don't deserve it, and I guess it's certainly true that I don't deserve it, but when we read how Paul writes, we see that all the action is on behalf of God. At the beginning, it talks about us receiving Jesus, but then all the action is God's action. Verse 13, it's God that made us alive with Christ when we had been dead in our sins. It's God that forgave our sins. Verse 14, it's God that cancelled our debts. Verse 14 again, it's God that's taken it away. And he's nailed it to a cross. And all this happens when we receive Jesus as Lord, when we receive him as the boss, the director of our lives, when it's now him that's calling the shots and not me. And that means my life is going to start to look really different to how it did before. Or at least that's the invitation. The invitation is to let my life be lived in him, to let my roots go down into him. 
and to let myself be built up in faith. Because we have got options. We have got options about whether we continue to live our lives in him after we've said yes to him. Like, if all this stuff was going to happen instantly, we are justified instantly, we are, we are forgiven instantly, but if we're going to be transformed, Paul would not be encouraging us to continue to live our lives in him. We've got a part to play. We have a choice over whether we allow ourselves to become rooted in him. We have a choice over whether we allow ourselves to be built up in him. So what does it look like for you to continue to live your life in him? I don't actually know the answer to that. We're all different. But what does it look like for you to choose to continue to live your life in him? What does it look like today for you to choose to allow your roots to go down deeper into him? What does it look like for you to be strengthened in the faith as you were taught? We've got other options too. We've got options about what we allow to form us. Even once we've said yes to following Jesus, we've got options about what we allow to shape the way that we see the world around us. And this passage that we just read, it's written to people who were following Jesus but they're still in danger of having the way that they live life and their view of life misshaped and misguided through what the passage calls hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. Now, the writer of this letter, Paul, he had a definite philosophy like in his aims that he was firing at when he said this. He wasn't anti-philosophy. There's nothing wrong with philosophy. Like You can see in the way Paul writes in other places, he loves a bit of philosophy. He loves a bit of deep thinking. But he's talking about being formed and shaped by philosophies which are not given to us from God. And one of the beautiful things that I've learned as I've got older about hanging around with people who come from a different culture to me, like we've all got our own family cultures, is that you meet people who see the world in a completely different way to the way that you see the world. And when you meet people who see the world in a completely different way to you, and they're good, kind people, and people who I know who've seen the world in a more similar way to how I've previously seen it are also good, kind people, but the two philosophies don't match, it makes you realize that actually so much of the way that you see the world and that I see the world hasn't always been handed to me directly by God because I, like everybody else, I'm formed by the culture around me. What I think is right and wrong, how I want to spend my time, what I do with my money, how I view other people, like even stuff like how I want to celebrate my birthday. So much of that stuff is it's just like shaped. We're shaped by what's going on around us. And Paul is urging the Colossians, and I believe Scripture is also urging us to be aware that like the world around us, it wants to shape us. It's always wanted to shape us. Whatever life looks like for you as a follower of Jesus, there will be ideas and philosophies and popular ways of thinking that don't sit easily with accepting Christ. And that will always cause friction. It's caused friction across every time and every culture. And the more that you say yes to Jesus, the more you will find friction between following him and culture around us and people that we're called to love. So Paul is warning us, don't get sidetracked. Don't get deceived by the spirit of the age. But he also reminds us, it's all about Jesus. It really is, not just a trite phrase, it really is all about Jesus. Because it's his action that has taken our debt away. It's his action that has caused us to be made right with God. It's not ours, it's his. 
And although this started out pretty grim, like all those reasons that we were in a bad state, the truth is we are now seated with God on high in heavenly places because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. That happens when we accept Jesus. It doesn't happen when you like have studied the Bible for years and years, although reading the Bible really helps. It doesn't happen when you like get some piece of paper to say that you've studied Christianity or Jesus or theology at some particular level. It happens at the moment when you say yes to following Jesus. So you may have decided to start following Jesus last week, and the truth is you're seated in heavenly places with Christ. And you may have been following Jesus for 50 years, and you're in exactly the same position because actually it's all him and it's not us. The invitation is just to say yes. And having said yes, what does it look like for you to continue to live your life in him? What does it look like for you to let your roots go down even deeper into him? What does it look like for you to allow yourself to be built up in him? Sometimes the simplest truths are actually the hardest to get our minds around. And the truth is that God actually loves you. God actually loves you. God actually loves you. He saw what a pickle we've got ourselves into, sometimes deliberately, sometimes because we've been taken captive by the hollow philosophies of our age. He's seen it, and he still loves you, and he still loves me. And it's him that has done it all. It's not you. It's not me. It's not we've been good for a long time and sucked up to him, so he's decided to forget all the bad stuff we did in the past. Like, he knows all that, and he's taking it on himself. And he loves you. And he loves me. And Paul exhorts the church in Coloss. And I believe it's the word of God, and it's exhorting us today to live our lives in him, to be rooted in him, and to be built up in him. Amen. We're going to spend a few minutes just asking the Spirit to speak to us individually and to show us what does it look like for us individually and as a body to let our roots go down deeper and to allow ourselves to be built up in him. So if you're up for it, I invite you to stand to your feet, and we're just going to spend a few moments in silence saying, Holy Spirit, here we are. Would you come and fill us and meet with us again? So Father God, we invite your presence, your Holy Spirit, who we know by faith is here with us. Father, I'm conscious that when we pray to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we're praying to the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The same Spirit that hovered over the waters at creation. Lord, would you speak to us? Would you meet with us now?
There's a story in the Old Testament I can't get out of my head this morning. It's of Samuel as a boy. And in the night, he hears his name being called. And he thinks it's the man he's living with. He's like, what are you saying to me? And eventually they work out it's the voice of God. And I just wonder if there might be people here who are thinking, God, is this you speaking to me? I had this thought over a period of weeks. Is this you? Samuel said to the Lord, Lord, speak, your servant's listening. And if you feel like there's a thing you're wrestling with and saying, Lord, is this you? I encourage you just to pray as Samuel prayed. Lord, speak, your servant's listening. feel slightly awkward just waiting but we're just going to keep being silent for a few more moments because the Lord is here and his spirit is with us as almost every week at Patton Church, we'd love to give anyone who wants to say yes to accepting Jesus as the boss, as Lord, for the first time, or maybe the first time in a long time, anyone who wants to say yes to being a Christian, the opportunity to do so. So I'm going to pray, and if that's you, I invite you to pray along in your hearts with me. I'm going to pray three things. Sorry, sorry for going my own way. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, that you died for me and that you love me. And please, please, Holy Spirit, come and fill me and help me live this new life. Father God, I acknowledge that I've gone off in my own way. That I've hurt you. I've hurt myself. I've hurt other people. Lord, I'm sorry for that. I repent of it. I leave it behind. And I want to say yes to being a follower of Jesus. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you that though I don't deserve it, you've taken away all my faults, all my sins, all my mistakes. And you've forgiven me, and I'm so grateful for that. You've forgiven me for free. And as I say yes to you, Jesus, would you send your spirit to fill me? As I say yes to this new life, Jesus, would you empower me by your spirit to live this life that you're calling me to? In Jesus' name, amen. We'd love to offer the opportunity for prayer this morning. If you'd just love somebody to pray with you. Um, As we start singing our next song, there'll be people who would love to pray with you. I'm actually just looking around the room to try and work out how we do this. I think maybe we like, there's a space at the back there. Um, If you would love somebody to pray with you, just quietly, you don't have to tell them what it is if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to go and stand in the back corner with a few other people, and we would love to pray for you if that's a thing that would bless you as we worship together. Thank you. 
Numbers chapter 6, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us this morning and um, for being church together. And yeah, we just hope you have a wonderful week going with God, being rooted and 
established in his love. And feel free to stick around for coffee upstairs. We're going to have newcomers down here in just a few minutes' time. And um, do, do go grab your children if you've got, if you got them. And have a great week. We'll see you guys soon.